All right, here's a bit of an update. I've got everything cleaned up. Found no obstructions, by the way, but I did clean out every little bit I could of the cooling system. Flushed it out really good. Checked with the bore scope. Couldn't find anything. Did the same thing with the head. Checked, looked for cracks. Painted this over with the razor blade. Then I actually coated this, with, coated some of this stuff with the grease, just because uh, I knew I wasn't going to be right back to it. So. I'll have to clean that up later. Um, let's see. Run out of things to really check. Um, the one thing I thought maybe could have been done. Everything in this engine looks almost brand new. So when I'm since I'm running out of things to really check without doing a full um, teardown, I'm thinking I'm going to check the. Um, the the lift the cam lift on here just because the one thing i thought about maybe could have happened is that this block almost everything is exactly the same as the diesel version uh this is an ag3 152 the ad3 152 is the same blocks the pistons are different now i've seen that i've seen the on um, part numbers that the um the camshaft is the same but in the specifications there's more lift in the uh, on the uh, camshaft on the diesel version. So one thing I want to check is see like if they did a rebuild, maybe they did a new cam. Maybe they they bought one of those um, uh, camshafts that maybe went for the diesel or something like that. Maybe it doesn't have the correct grind grind on this, uh, whatever that means. I have heard, uh, of course. I, well, again, I don't have a lot of experience, especially with. But actually, with any internal engines, like any kind of internal stuff like this. But I have read that uh, if you have a weird grind or something like that, that you can cause a lot of overheating. So, it's a shot in the dark. But I'm going to try that. And then also, I still need to try to find the timing marks. <clears throat> I cannot find them on the, um, on the harmonic balancer, you know, crankshaft pulley. There's a little cutout over here. And hopefully you can see that. But that's good. It's such a terrible place because right here is where the exhaust is. So I think it's a terrible place to have to try to see your timing. The only good thing is I do have the exhaust is connected. I mean... You have extremely hot gases coming out of you, like in your, like when you have to get your head down there to try to see where that little mark is. Um, I'm going to try to use like a yellow paint marker and something so maybe I can see it and try to actually check the timing because all I've been able to do is, is retard it a little bit because I just, I cannot get in there very well. But, um, like I said, I'm kind of running out of some things to check. Uh, I'm still thinking it might still. I, I still now I'm starting to go back and think maybe it's a little bit of a um, a fuel mixture issue. I really don't know. I'm gonna get this thing back together, I think, and then uh, uh, take it to a small engine place or a tractor place or whatever, and just see if they've got any ideas. Because I'm really, really kind of running out. I went through the manual. And uh, now there's a couple things I need to check when I get this thing back together. I need to confirm valve timing, stuff like that. Um, but it's... It's really, really odd. Another reason I do think they could be somewhat um, fuel-related is because... There's a lot of things that can go wrong with a... Uh, a gas engine with the uh, the tank mounted right above all your heat. You know, you're you're generating all this heat, and it'll boil that gas. So that's uh, I don't know. Even though this one has the heat shield it's supposed to, it won't boil it at, at normal operating temperatures. But it it does just seem like a really really bad place to put a gas tank. That being said, I think. A tractor 
has very little business being gas anyway. I mean, that's gas engines are fine for certain things, but I mean, I think there's a reason why this is a diesel block and I think they just made it because back in the day, more people were used to, older people were used to gasoline uh, tractors. And I think that has more to do with it than the how these should actually function. So, but that's beside the point. I mean, it, this still should not be overheating like it is. It should just be more a pain in the butt because I'll have to change out spark plugs, change out spark plug wires, change out ignition coils, distributor stuff, you know, take the carburetor, new cleaning it and stuff. Now, the only good thing about that is all that stuff's cheap. And as soon as you have an, you have an issue with your injection timing on a diesel, I mean, it's, it's expensive. I mean, I've seen some of these pumps go for like a three grand. I have no idea what's the difference between those and the cheaper ones, but still, pretty crazy. So, anyway, I basically don't know what I'm doing now, still. I, I have absolutely found nothing besides when I pop that coil cap plug off. I might have, I still have it in there. One of the little ears fell off. So that's why it's a pretty good indication of why I couldn't get it started the other day. But normally this is actually a pretty good uh, starting tractor. Just pull out the choke, cranks over a couple times, fires right up. Idle's pretty good, but now it's been starting to run rougher and rougher and rougher. But I think that's because of the, the ignition system doesn't look quite right. Or it's got some wear in it now. Also, we keep kind of messing with it, trying to, we back the timing off, and really I backed it off until just enough before it started running like crap. It was, I went forward, definitely wasn't going to go forward and, and run well, so I just backed it off a touch, and that was the only little window that it ran well at all in, so I don't know, and I left it as, I made it as retarded as I could, so... Like I said, we're running out of options here. Got a rebuilt carburetor. The only thing I could think, maybe, it's, I think that they're, again, I think because of the, the way it boils, uh, I think there's more of a chance of maybe causing some sort of vapor lock. Maybe some stuff is getting clogged. And then I'm not getting the fuel I should be getting. However, of course, that's because I, normally, I do not see, when I was pull these spark plugs, trying to use that old, uh, that old fashioned way of uh, gauging my mix, my fuel mixture. Uh, so last time the plugs were, it was certainly running uh, rich, very, very clearly running rich. Every time else, the plugs have just shown the indication that it's got hot. Well, yeah, we knew it got hot, so it really never told me anything. However, I, I, that would mean to me that it's either at least running lean. Or, yes, it's just running hot, but um, that doesn't rule out that the mixture's not lean. So, I figured by pressure washing out the fuel tank and just blowing every, going through all the lines and stuff like that, rebuilding the carburetor, uh, that that would have done it, but hey, it did not. There's also mention about a vent for some of these tanks. Now that's something I don't think I have on here, so I might have to just I might just pull the gas cap uh, gasket for when it's not in use, and maybe that would maybe that'll help. Uh, running out of things to check, but when it, I do, I'm gonna I, I already have some gaskets. Uh, I believe that the copperhead gasket. See, I I bought an engine kit for the diesel one because it was half the price of the uh, gas version because I actually needed just a couple um, gaskets for when I was doing the cooling system that I, I, I wasn't sure if I was, what kind of time frame I was going to get them back from Perkins. Actually Perkins sent me the uh, the stuff that I ordered, the gaskets that I ordered very quickly so but uh, do this chest and see what our lift's like. 